What's up guys, welcome back to another Electric Sleeper video. Today we are talking about my very first build and what I would do to change it if I had to do it all over again. After a couple months of research and a few spreadsheets to get a budget together, I finally assembled my very first Electric Sleeper build in April of 2017. And uh, it went pretty well, I would say, for my very first build. So three years ago when I completed my first build, there were pretty much zero videos about DIY electric skateboards. There's very, very few, um, not a ton of information out there. So three years ago, I had to really do a lot of research using general electronics tutorials, tutorials for different hobbies that use the same type of speed controllers or batteries, and compile as much information as I could and then apply it to the project I was currently working on. And then finally, when I felt really comfortable and confident that I actually could put it together once the parts showed up, I began sourcing my parts and getting a solid parts list together. So before I can tell you what I would change about my board if I did it again, I do have to tell you what parts I used in my board when I originally built it. We have come a long way since my very first build was built, but I do still have it. Um, we hang it up here on the wall. Um, that kind of reminds me, you know, how it all started, where we came from. Um, so a lot of the components are gone now. I, I've kind of parted it out. They're in different builds now, but I still have the main body um, But I do still have a ton of footage from when we originally built it So my very first build consisted of a bunch of parts from a bunch of different vendors But one main vendor that I did use was Inertion. Inertion is no longer around. They went out of business about a year ago now um, but at the time, they were producing a VESC called the VESC X, which is what I used for my ESC. The VESC X ultimately became known as the Fockbox, um, which then again was replaced by the Fockbox Unity. Um, but again, at the, at the time, the VESC X was the best ESC you could get, the best VESC, best <laughs> VESC uh, th that was on the market. So I got, I was just, my heart was set on that. That's what I got. And then while I was shopping with them, I also got my trucks, my wheels, uh, my pulley system, and a couple other items. Um, that all came from Inertion. So as far as my battery went, I tried to save some money and go with three 3S LiPo batteries all hooked in series to create a single 9S battery pack and then I would charge each one of those with a bounce charger. And then this build used a single 6355 motor, a generic motor mount from Amazon, and then a generic deck from Amazon. And then my enclosure was really simple. It was literally just a piece of Tupperware, a container with like a latching lid that I spray painted blue. Super simple and it was free. So if you've been following our channel for a while or you've built your own electric skateboard, you might be thinking that this build was pretty simple and probably was pretty cheap. You should be correct, but you were not. This build was way more expensive than it really should have been. At the time, three years ago, based on part availability, that build ended up costing me almost $800 at the end of the day, which is way, way too much. So again, for that same budget, I could just build such a better board. So we're gonna get into exactly what parts I would change out and make a significantly better board for that same budget or even less. So one of the main problems with my build was that I used about four or five different vendors when it came to all my parts. And that added over a hundred dollars to my total just in shipping costs alone. So if I did it all again, I would consolidate all my parts to as few vendors as I possibly could just to save on the shipping or get free shipping if I had spent enough with a single vendor. So as far as performance goes, I was actually pretty happy with it. It had a 10 mile range, a 25 mile an hour top speed, and it had plenty of torque. Like I was cruising up the hills, no problem. So all of that was pretty good. But the board itself, the way that it was built, it just had a few quirks that would drive me crazy now and actually started driving me crazy only a few months after building it. The most memorable complaint I have is charging each of the three 3S batteries separately with a balanced charger. I thought originally that it wouldn't be a big deal and it, to start it really wasn't a big deal, but then it really got old having to babysit each of my LiPo batteries, charge them separately, and it just made it really, really difficult to either A, charge at school. At the time I was cruising around campus a lot, I couldn't really charge my board at school um, if, if you had built this board, maybe if you were going to work, you really couldn't charge it in public. It was just, it was just a lot to do. Um, it really wasn't super practical. You had to open your board up, unplug everything, and then plug all three battery packs in together in series, which I ended up one day on autopilot, just plugged them in wrong, and I ended up shorting one of the battery packs. So it was just, it was just not, I was just kind of a pain. Like at the time, it was awesome. I was happy to get my board done, but now looking back, it was kind of a pain. And for the price that I paid back then, we could easily swap that 9S setup for an all complete 
10S 2P battery pack and it would just be plug and play and we wouldn't have to do anything with a balanced charger. Okay, so aesthetics is actually really important to me, but oddly enough, the enclosure that I used, I actually really liked. Like, it didn't look pretty at all. Like, I know aesthetics are important, but like, it didn't look pretty. However, it was actually really nice being able to just pop open that enclosure really quick and see what was going on under the hood. Now, with like more uh, traditional electric skateboard enclosures, there's quite a few screws you have to pull apart before you can actually get in there. So if you're someone who likes to tinker or make adjustments throughout the build process, honestly, a, just a piece of Tupperware isn't a bad idea. Um, and then once you get everything nailed down, it's probably a good idea to get a real enclosure just because it'll fit your board a little bit better. But I really didn't have a lot of complaints over the enclosure I originally used. Now though, if I swapped out my uh, three batteries and ended up getting a complete charging solution or complete battery, I wouldn't really have the need to open that enclosure up a hundred times. So I would end up swapping out that enclosure for a real electric skateboard enclosure. So one place I kind of went wrong with my original build was buying a lot of stuff from Inertion. Inertion was awesome, their products were good. However, I at the time was not using the Vesk X to its full potential. Um, I spent a lot of money on it, more money than I should have bought on it. And I try to justify the cost of that and the shipping cost by buying um, trucks and pulleys and a couple other things. But in reality, I didn't need to get a Vesk of that magnitude. I really could have went with a more traditional like version four Vesk and I would have gotten all the performance I needed because I really didn't even max out that Vesk at all. So at the end of the day, I definitely would have downgraded my Vesk, gotten a more normal looking Vesk, nothing that was too crazy, that would have been perfectly fine for my build, and then I would have been able to take um, all the other parts I got from Inertion and source them from a, a, an overlapping company I was already shopping with, and I would have saved a lot more money in shipping. A couple more things I really did like about my build was the remote I used. I used a, a mini remote, and it was fine. It was great. But now that the VX1 exists, nowadays, if I did this again, I wouldn't reach for that remote. I'd reach for the VX1 because they're about the same price. Um, actually, the VX1 can be cheaper sometimes. Um, the VX1 is just a significantly nicer remote, so I would just reach for that. Not because I didn't like the other remote, but I do like the VX1 more, and it's about the same price now in 2020, 2021. And then I'd still use the same size motor, the 6355 treated me very well. And that $25 deck on Amazon, honestly, I had no complaints. It was pretty nice. And then as far as the generic uh, motor mount goes from Amazon, I didn't really have any complaints about that either, except that it was 60 bucks, which is kind of a lot for a motor mount. And now that there are much nicer motor mounts on the market for about 40 to $45, I would definitely go with one of those. And one thing that wasn't even present on my first build, but would absolutely be present on my second build is an anti-spark power switch. I did not use one before. I would just plug the battery in and unplug the battery and literally watch it spark every single day. And it's just not great for your electronics. So I would absolutely put in a power button. Also, this would allow me to not have to open my enclosure anymore. So if I had a charge port and power button on the outside of my enclosure, I could actually use a real enclosure and I have to open everything up. So I would absolutely get a power button for this build if I did it all over again. So at the end of the day, if I were to make all of those changes and add it to my original board, I would have a significantly better board for less money than I spent the first time. So three years ago, things were a lot more expensive than they are now, obviously. With any hobby, usually everything eventually goes down in price. So um, those are the changes I would make. And honestly, that board that I just outlined um, would be a really solid beginning board. So if you were to take away a few things from this video, one, Consolidate your vendors to as few people as possible. You will save a ton of money on shipping and honestly, you'll probably be, you know, qualify for free shipping most of the time if you spend enough. Um, but if you break all your parts out, your totals will all go down across all the stores, which will lead to more shipping uh, costs. Um, two, don't underestimate the power of and the look of a, a complete enclosure. Um, it's, it looks really nice, makes your board look a lot nicer. Um, three, absolutely, Charging lipos separately, it gets old. It does, I mean, it, you can save some money in the beginning, but it does really get old, and you're gonna be itching for a more complete design. Um, it, it just it happened to me. I really thought I'd be fine with three lipos, but it just, it was just a pain. And then finally, if you're not going to use a piece of gear to its fullest extent, it's not worth buying. Don't buy a super upgraded Vesk if you're only going to run a single motor at very low amperage. It's not worth it. Just downgrade your vest, put more money into your battery or some other part of your build. Obviously, vests are one of the most important pieces, so you don't want to you know, skimp out on it. However, if you know you're not going to use the max, max capacity, maybe just go down one model. 
Maybe you don't need a VESC 6, maybe you need a VESC version 4 because your build doesn't really require a ton of power. So anyways, hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video. Hopefully maybe that inspires you to make some changes to your board or maybe rework your current part list. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them down below. If you've made any upgrades to your boards, let me know. What do you change? What do you wish you could change? And also, all the parts that we've talked about today are in the description below. Using those links really helps support those cha this channel. So thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys in the next one.